Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Yes. Hello, Stevie. Hello. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back to you, too. We are finally nearing the end of Picard, and oh, how exciting oh, that was. So very close to the end of Picard. I mean, one episode left. Yeah. And it really got going this time. Uh, yes. Uh, they're really, uh, it's just, it's rolling downhill with all the momentum. Downhill in the best way. Uphill, downhill. To, uh some sort of catastrophic conclusion perhaps 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 a cliffhanger that's my new theory because we know season three is coming so i feel like they're gonna leave us on a (laughs) 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 and for those of you who are wondering why we're making those noises (laughs) welcome to set phasers a highly illogical uh star trek podcast my name is aki vermees and my name is stevie manns that over there is Stevie, and uh, and we uh, today's star date is star date two two nine zero four three zero point one, and we're talking about yes the penultimate episode of Star Trek Picard's second season. This is episode nine, entitled "Hide and Seek," and we're gonna get into it. But before we get into it, we're gonna do a quick preamble and talk about what Patreon. Yes, what else? We have a Patreon, and we would love it if you would join us on our continuing mission. Uh, to talk about Trek and do all sorts of fun things with you. Patreon.com forward slash set phasers. You can get early access to the audio episodes, the video episodes, which are exclusive until the season has finitoed. That's we, not a finito finished. Well, like, let's just go with that. Finito. Finito. We do some watch parties. We do some Zoom hangs. It's all around a good time. So if you want to uh, join us, patreon.com forward slash set phasers. And get ready to chat. I don't know. I was, I was hoping I'd come up with something cool at the end of that. Uh, chat is cool. I like chatting. We're going to yeah. chat. You know, in fact, why don't we run this bad boy down? Let's do it. It's time to run it down. Can you run it down for me? Talk about the car down. Run it down. Star Trek Picard. Star Trek Picard. Sorry, I so triumphal that little fa 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 can't fully explain, but there was a little kissy kissy that happened in the last episode, and Ricardo got a tummy ache because he ate too much ice cream out of the uh, replicator. And but now uh, people realize things are going pretty pretty bad, and he sees that there's a remote uh, transport. The ship is being accessed remotely to transport a bunch of people to the stark and stormy uh, Chateau Picard. And as he sees their transport. Porter signatures register out of thin air, all green like. He's like, oh no, it's the Borg. We gotta run. So he runs. Uh he at first thinks, let me go to the armory, maybe get something. Uh, but then he runs into a bunch of Borg and uh Gerati and the Borg Queen have, as we discussed in the last episode, have become one, sort of. Although they're like an argumentative one. But nonetheless, we are referring to them as Borgati. Borgati. Uh, Borgati. So Borgati confronts him and he's like, oh no. And uh, he runs away. Uh, Picard et al., who also were realizing what was going on just at the last moment, they beam into Chateau Picard 
uh, and Rios is running with Dr. Teresa and Ricardo, and he tells them to go hide. But they're being hunted by these Borg warriors, these ad hoc Borg warriors that Borgati made in the last episode using the super soldiers that Adam Tsung had created for, I forgot the name, to write down the name of the stupid things like Sky Tell. Uh, nope, those were pagers in the 90s. It's Gangledorf, uh, Missile Masterpiece, Torpedo Dancing, uh, Lightning Bear. I don't know. Anyway. I don't recall, but it was fun to watch you do that. Well, you know, I'm, whenever, when I can't remember a name, I all the way can't remember it. So anyway, you've got this team up, Jurati and Dr. Sung, and they're going after Picard because uh, Jur- Bor- Borgati wants that ship. Uh, and so uh, the Borg Queen, Borgati, tries to take over the ship and just get out of there. Uh, but then she is stopped, uh, unable to control her own hand. And then we see inside the mind of Jurati and Borgati, and there's a fight going on. And basically Jurati is, has been able to regain a little bit of control. And she's been, bo- uh, you know, uh, poking around in the Borg Queen's mind. And she realizes, well, we're not so different, you and I. She does a little bit of a like a villain's monologue, but kind of like not a villain's monologue. We're not so different. In every timeline, you are a lonely like me. Also, the queen's like, I don't care, and like powers through, and then is able to hit the like keypad, but then finds out that she's locked out of the systems. Why? Because Jurati put in a subroutine while the queen was accessing the ship to do a, quote, fractal lock on the ship's controls. And she doesn't remember the, the code, so the queen can't dig around in her mind. Where does she put it? Oh, she put in a little program, a little something I like to call the emergency combat hologram. And who is it? Uh, Is it uh, like, you know, framed after or whatever you want to call what a hologram does? I'm going to do this with my hands. Uh, Framed after? You know, who is it based based on? on? The emergency combat hologram. It's based on Elnor. 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 Make him sound like a wizard. Elnor. It's based on the wizard Elnor. L of the North. Um, yes. So, uh, emergency combat hologram. Uh oh, that's going to cause a problem for these Borg, I think. And also, it is the key to controlling the ship. And Elnor takes off. Uh, the Picard, Talon, Rafi, Seven, Rios, Teresa, and Ricardo are uh, taking cover behind some barrels or something. And they're fighting, you know, got all the green lasers of the Borg, you know, kind of viewfinder things, very Borg-esque. And they're being pinned down by fire. And then a grenade is thrown and it goes off and it causes Picard to have this flashback where he's, it's him and his mom and his father. And it's like, sunny afternoon. And he's like, mother, should we play a game? And she goes, oh, you want to play a game? I don't know. And, you know, there's a whole thing, remember, we know about his mother, Yvette, and how she had a... Uh, um, but very uh, dark moods and perhaps was prone to, um, uh, I don't know how, what even to describe it, because we don't really know if, if she's having hallucinations or if it's just truly, like, pure despairing of the soul. In any case, his mother's like, yeah, we can play a game. Why don't we play hide and seek? Back to the prison. Uh, Rios is trying to get the doc and the kid inside. He gets shot in the arm as that happens. Picard orders uh, Talon to get Rios and the kids to safety, beam them back to the apartment, which Talon does. And then he's like, lock them out because he's injured. Uh, so Rios is trying to get back, but he's been shut down and he's upset about it. And Teresa's upset that he's trying to go back. And the rest of them decide we got to split up. Seven and Rafi, Picard and Talon. Maybe we can divide and conquer. We got to get back to the ship and take it over. Uh, as uh, Seven and Rafi take off, Adam Sung makes his presence known. Yes, he shows up and he does a full villain's monologue. Oh, ho, 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 ho. the first of, of of many, I think, we're going to get from Adam Sung. Uh, but basically, he's like, hey, Picard, listen, baby, uh, I'm not trying to hear, I'm not here to try to kill you, man. I know that I have a great future, but you are, you know, uh, you're like uh, an unknown. What I want you to do is just listen, surrender. And uh, listen, I get to live my great future life as being Adam Soong, father of all great things. And that's what I expect. And you, I'll let you guys live, I guess, or whatever. And Picard's like, what if we refuse? And then uh, Soong is like, it'll be a much dirtier process if you refuse me. But then Picard remembers playing hide and seek. And he tells Talon, 
we gotta go hide. Meanwhile, Ralphie and Seven wandering through the estate, narrowly miss a soldier, narrowly miss another soldier, but then, boom! Uh, they wind up having to fight uh, one of these Borg soldiers hand to hand. Seven loses the phaser that she has. They fight, punch, 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 kick, 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 pow, 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 pew, 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 a little bit. But then in the end, it's Rafi gets the soldier some kind of super complicated leg arm lock thing. And then they uh, have a knife and throws it. And then Rafi tries to stab the guy, but then he's got the super strong power. And say, Seven, help me. And Seven comes over and then together, four arms against two, they four, and, eight, yeah, and they kill this one board guy. And uh, they're like, okay. Oh, we gotta go. Uh, okay, Picard uh, and Talon head down into the catacombs, but Picard has to remember how to get into the catacombs. So he's gotta remember that fateful day with his mother. Oh, and uh, he remembers his mother showing him the way. That speech from the first episode, you're, you're always my light. It's uh, we'll play a game. Don't you wanna be with me, et cetera, et cetera. In a new context, he's remembering it perhaps as it truly was, not as he sought to remember it. Mm, so much mem remembrance. Uh, someone get me Marcel Proust on the phone. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so there's a bookcase that you turn a thing and it slides and then you can go down into the catacomb. So they go down there. There's like an overlay of young Picard wandering in the dungeons. Talon remembers these catacombs from being inside of Picard's mind a few episodes ago. Picard says this is where he lost his mother or where she lost herself. Ooh. What does it mean? But also there's tunnels that lead to an escape hatch across the vineyard, so they gotta run for it. Rafi and Seven in the kitchen, repairing some injuries. Seven relates, uh, you know, there's like kind of a, you know, Rafi's like, man, you're doing so great. You're like a captain. You really should join Starfleet. And Seven's like, I couldn't, they wouldn't let me. Janeway went to bad for me, threatened to resign, but I gave it up and I became a ranger. Uh, and they're like, okay, what do we got? We gotta run out of this kitchen and run to the ship it's a long way, and all we have is a knife and things we found in the kitchen. And they're like, you know what? We may not make it, uh, but we're still going to run for it. And then they just run out into the vineyards. Uh, and there's a pretty cool moment that I liked where Seven just slit some Borg's throat <laughs> without breaking stride. It's pretty sweet. Um, the Elnor hologram is on the ship. It finds the armory. It's like guns. Ooh, sweet. Hmm. Big gun? <laughs> I don't know. <gasps> my sword and then he's like so wait meanwhile rios is trying to hack his way back into being able to transport into picard's uh, estate Teresa tells him that she doesn't want him to go that maybe he belonged here maybe even though he's been in the future this is where he should be but he's like ah that may not be the right case in any case he's too injured to go back he'd be a fool to do it because he's still got a bullet in his arm he'd be too weak to help so she uses the tricorder that's there to uh Let's heal, repair, uh, address, dress his wounds. Uh, Sung is still looking through the house. He's got his own little private honor guard of super soldier Borgs. Uh, he sees the scraping from the move shelf and realizes that they've gone down. Uh, let's see. He tells the Borg, search for other entrances because he knows that they might be trying to sneak their way out. Picard, still haunted by the memory of his mother, uh, she's asking, there's a whole conversation they have down in the catacombs, and now he remembers as an adult that the last time he saw it, he was a child, so he hasn't been down there since this fateful day, and it's his mother in a torture state, and she's asking her to, him to remember her as the light that she was, the love that she had for him, and not the, what she calls, a, a faded star whose light you see only too late as it travels across the galaxy. Uh... Uh, and then young uh, JL remembers that uh, that was the whole thing. They ran across the thing. His foot got stuck. His father finds him, finds a vet. They lock her in a room. Uh, and she was begging for uh, Jean-Luc to let her out. And he did open the door. But what happened? Well, he was about to say, but then the Borg find Picard and Talon interrupting the story. And they have to run. Elnor, meanwhile, is fighting the Borg back, back on La Serena. He is beating the living crap out of them. Rafi and Seven rush aboard, having made their desperate run across uh, the vineyard. Uh, Rafi has a, is like, what? Elnor, are you alive? And then she's like, oh, no, okay, you're a hologram. Elnor explains that he's the key. Seven asks for access. Rafi's a little concerned, but Seven's like, I've got a plan. Don't you worry about it. Uh, Rafi has a moment where she's at least able to talk to this 
hologram of Elnor and say, listen, the reason I kept you with me was not because I was worried about you being able to handle yourself, it's because I was afraid of being alone. And the emergency combat hologram says, I have the memory of Elnor's last moments on the table, and I tell you, he did not feel fear, but love. <laughs> so much love in this episode. Uh, Seven is trying to access the systems. She's able to do it. She transports all the Borg away and into the walls of the grounds of the estate. Ooh, grisly way to die. But you got to pick one. There's only one Borg still aboard. And who is that? Just Borgati. So, Borgati and Elnor combat hologram fight. It's pretty intense. They're fighting back and forth. They're both in their black. And, you know, oh, yeah, by the way, I forgot to mention that. Gerardi, when she comes on board, gets rid of the red dress, and she goes to the queen's corpse and gets her, you know, black cyberpunky electro thingy suit, and so she's wearing that this whole episode, which, so this whole fight is very, very classic ninja movie kind of thing. Uh, but anyway, Elnor is able to somehow get the upper hand and get the queen down, uh, and uh, uh, Rafi and Seven get phasers and they're holding them on the queen. They're like, please don't make us do this, Gerardi. I know you're still in there. And she's like, oh, am I? And uh, there's a whole moment where we think we have the upper hand here. Maybe the queen is going to go down, but there's too much time left in the episode. And so Borgati uses the tentacles to disarm Rafi and to critically, mortally wound Seven with a gut shot and uh, takes over control of the ship and tells to set course for the Delta Quadrant because they need to build in order to come back and destroy the Confederation. Rafi tries to reason with Borgati to save Seven. As she's doing that, she goes for the gun, and Borgati knocks her back again, so she's down and out. Beautiful speech here by Borgati. Mwah, it's in my quotable moments. Soon, corners Picard and Talon in the solarium when they think they've gotten out. Uh, and meanwhile, Borgati's got a knife out, and she's about to stab Seven. This is all happening uh, uh, ning at the same time. What's the word? Concomitant? Concomitantly? Concomitantly? Concomitantly. Uh, what? I'm not sure if I'm... They're happening simultaneously. That's a cool word for it, but I can't remember. Not congruently. It's like at the same time. Concomitantly. Concomitantly? Comatitant? Comatitant? And it's not simultaneously. Do you want to Google what that word might be? I mean, yeah, sure. Let's Google. You can Google that. It's not concurrently, is it? It's not concurrently. I'm just trying to do something fancy, and I couldn't figure. Oh, it's not even right, you dummy Burmese. It's concomitant. Oh, concomitant. Never heard. Concomitant. Of concomitant. Concomitant. This isn't just a Star Trek show, folks. This is a grammar lesson. Get your lesson, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, naturally accompanying or associated or with, a dictionary for lesson. example she loved travel with all its concomitant worries so these are not happening concomitant. concomitantly but they are concomitant in that we are worried about both at the same time the point is uh ooh, ooh, that leads, yes. can, I, can i can i just uh can i can i quote the board queen before Please. my quotable moments finally some semblance of a point <laughs> oh beautiful yes i'm doing my best Borgati. uh <laughs> Borgati tries to stab Seven. The hand stalls. She sees tears on her hand. She's like, why am I crying? Those are Gerardi's tears. So now we go back into the mind of the Borg Queen and Gerardi are sharing. She says the dopamine and adrenaline that allowed the Queen to take control of Gerardi have allowed Gerardi to take some semblance of control back, feeling that sass and sadness and loss and despair. And uh, Gerardi again is trying to convince the Queen, listen, you you always lose. You you build and you build and you build and you conquer and conquer and conquer, but you but you never succeed. And part of the, that drive is because you know that you will lose because across infinite timelines that you can sense, you know that you always are defeated and you lose your big collective family or whatever. And Gerardi suggests that maybe if the Borg could ask to bring people in the collective, they could do better. Uh, there are people that need help and they could be great people, people like Seven. She's like, let's build a, univer uh, a, a collective full of Sevens. Uh, Picard, meanwhile, tells Sung the future is not going to be great. Sung's like, what are you talking about? We're going to be beloved across the galaxy. And Picard's like, we're not going to be beloved. We're going to be feared in this future. And Sung says, at this level of power, baby, fear and love are the same damn thing. Uh, the queen, meanwhile, is dubious of Gerardi's plans. He's like, you want us to collect scraps? Gerardi's like, what if we take the ship and build a better Borg? A real collective based not on assimilation, 
with salvation. I mean, that's like Gettysburg level. Uh, uh, the queen says, that is absurd. That's when she says, finally getting to some semblance of the point, but not unintriguing. And Gerardi says, the connection, if they were to do that, the connections of the collective could grow and deepen and be stronger and be the best Borg that the Borg could be. This is when she says, let's build a universe of sevens and let's start with this one, pointing at Seven, who's bleeding out from the, the gut chat on the, on the ground there. Meanwhile, Sung is like, mm, yeah, well, since you're not going to help, shame, really, he says. In another future, we might have become friends. <laughs> and he tells the Borg that are with him to eliminate Picard and Talon. That's precisely when Rios figures out back in Talon's apartment how to hack the pad and is able to get a countdown to get him to transport back in. Teresa asks him to stay. He says the future might be there in the past. Might have always been. But anyway, they kiss. Oh, so passionate. But then he transports away. He's got his gun. Shoots the Borg immediately. Takes him down. Then the key drops from that destroyed Borg. I don't know where that key came from. And then they have a fight on their hands. Meanwhile, on the ship, the Borgati reaches out some filament things and is doing stuff to Seven. And Rafi's like, you're killing her. But is she? You don't know, because you didn't hear the conversation that Borgati had in their head. Soon picks up a weapon because Rios is fighting hand-to-hand -hand with the Borg, and he takes him out. He picks up a weapon, and he's like, I bet I can fire this. And, and Rios is like, ooh, well, it's easy to fire, but you need the right DNA to do it, baby. Otherwise, it explodes. And Sung throws it up. It explodes. They all cover their eyes. When they look back, Sung is gone. And Rios is like, you're welcome for saving me. I'm going to the ship. Holding the key, Picard finally completes this memory. He finally remembers what happened. Uh... His mother had been locked away, begged for help. He had found the key, unlocked the door, gone to lie down with her, fallen asleep. She woke up, tiptoed across to the solarium, closed the door, and committed suicide, basically. And then he found her as a child. He must have been eight, nine, ten, something like that. And so this tragic memory, he's like conflated, hidden, buried down, finally opens up and reveals itself. Uh, how much trauma he had been holding back from this memory of his mother and her untimely death and his discovery thereof. In fact, as we see it in the episode, so beautiful, I was going to add this to the chat, that they they show it in reverse, which is so intense. Uh, yeah, and uh, Talon comforts him after uh, hearing the story and tells him, like, even though it causes a lot of pain, love is still totally worth it. And we also find out uh, that the person who shattered all the glass in the solarium. It wasn't uh, that story that he was telling when he was in his mind being interviewed by his father, and it wasn't his mother. It was Picard himself, a young Picard himself, in a fit of rage through a rock through the glass windows. Uh, okay, Seven is saved, but in order to save her, the Borgati had to give her a couple of, you know, implants. So basically, she's Seven again with the thing here and the hand things and the whatchamadoozies. Hit him. It's seven of nine. We'll come back to a full, oh, we'll do I the full one later. Sting. It's pretty good. Um, <laughs> I forgot that we had one that was oh. just like that. Uh, yes. Uh, seven is, is like, uh, it was nice to be ordinary for a while. And Gerardi's like, you were never ordinary. You're the most extraordinary person I know, whether you're a Borg or a human. So deal with it. Borgati shows up and says, hey, time to go. Deal is a deal. I saved your life so I could get this ship and I got something to do. And they're like, who are you? You half Gerardi, half queen? And she's like, uh, we're becoming something new. I, Aki would argue, they are becoming Borgati. Uh, and so the deal is made. There's no need for a Borg slayer in the future. So... Uh, they've got to save the now. Oh, and she gives them one parting piece of completely uh, unparsable information. Basically says, the mission must not be postponed. To succeed, there must be two Renes, one who lives and one who dies. And then she beams Rafi and Seven off the ship and she takes off. Just as Rios is running up and he's like, no. And then Picard and Talon show up and they're like, oh man, we don't have a ship. And then Picard's like, all right. We got work to do. Seven relates what the Queen Borgati said to her. And Picard's like, I refuse to believe in outcomes that I can take out all of you. Follow me. And so he storms off into the vineyard and uh, they follow. And as we look over into the sky, the La Serena goes into warp. And that is the end. The penultimate episode of season two of Star Trek Picard entitled Hide and Seek. 
Let's chat about that, I guess. Indeed. I say, darling, let's do a quick chat about that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. let's do. Yeah. Ooh, let's do. Ooh. Well, as you saw this, you saw this episode before me. I did. And we were texting about it as we were preparing to do this. And you were like, it's very exciting. Hold oh. on to your butt. And I uh, still was not prepared for everything that happened. It was crazy. It was crazy. So we watched, yeah. well, I watched it, but I watched it with headphones on because someone decided to, because it's that time of year again where people are l- mowing their lawns at stupid mm-hmm. times. There was a whole thing on NPR about it, but we don't need to go into Yeah. That. Well, I put my headphones on and I watched it. Mm-hmm. It's a really fun way to watch it, actually, because you're just super honed in and focused on it. Thoroughly enjoyed that um, experience. Anyway, watching this by myself, my wife is sitting next to me on the sofa, and I'm like going, ah, ooh. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, um, no. Oh, <gasps> what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This one, I mean... If we put a dun 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 in every moment that was a dun dun dun, we would still be doing. We'd be halfway through the rundown right now. It finally moved. I think we've yes. spent a lot of time waiting for this season to pick up and kind of go somewhere, and we finally got mm-hmm. to the culmination of the conflict, really, or one of yes. them, certainly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly the culmination of the of the most uh, sort of. I guess they kind of they they unravel in layers. So this is interesting because like the first weird thing we saw is the Borg Queen. Now we have sort of a rev- resolution as to what's going on with the Borg Queen. It's Borgati probably in the future that's bringing Picard into the past, right? Uh, but we don't have full confirmation of that. But that's we can we can sort of assume that that's the case. Now we sort of need to unravel what the deal is with Renee and what her her sort of purpose is and the organism she finds and why one has to live and one has to die what to do with that and then also what the hell is going on with Q yeah Q was absent for this entire episode been AWOL yeah yeah well he sent Sung to take care of some stuff and then went AWOL uh, so I think we're gonna have we got a lot to wrap up in the final season mm-hmm. but so much stuff did get resolved here in this episode like all the reason we've had all these flashbacks with Picard and he's been looking so longingly at the solarium so often and the thoughts of his mother and his relationship with his father and uh, perhaps uh, his inability to express genuine love for someone who loves him. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, I thought this episode had a lot of love in it. I wrote love, true love. Uh, You got Picard learning that perhaps the reason he is refused to love because he's been hurt so badly he's afraid of how much pain love could bring you got seven and rafi who've been who are like together but there was an issue even in the beginning of the season they were kind of like uh you know rafi's talking to picard about like how can i get in the way of someone who's always saving the universe you know but they've also been fighting with who is seven is she going to learn to love herself or is she loving the annika who's not seven you know this novel experience of being human but and Rafi and is Rafi manipulative and what is the deal there mm-hmm. but they're able to come to some sort of like they've they've hidden from and sought each other dare I draw a line back to the title and also Borgati you know Borgati, this yes. uh, arguably the Borg Queen and and Agnes have been uh coupled damp- up flirt flirting around with it. yeah they've mm-hmm. been like sort of like you know the Queen's whole seduction of Gerardi and the in those early episodes is that you've been alone and every timeline you're alone you're never with anybody we first see Gerardi in that first episode just kind of drunk and broken up from Rios and it's not really sort of listless and you know kind of protecting uh, uh, not Soji he's the one who lived I forget oh, no. Dodge well Dodge yeah so this like coupling up of the queen and Gerardi the, you know she's like you'll never be alone because I'll be with you and vice versa so there's a whole lot of resolution there, except Rios. He left Teresa behind. Mm. Mm. Or did he? I think he did. I mean, he did leave her. Yeah, literally did leave her behind. But is that the last we'll see of the good doctor of the clinic del Mariposas? I think so. That's my oh. professional opinion. Because right now they're in Talon's apartment, which is kind of a weird thing. Like, do they even know where they are in the city? And, like, the kid has seen a lot of stuff. No, that's fair. He's just dumped her in some random apartment in LA. Well, but they made out first. (laughs) Um, uh, (laughs) uh, Obviously, Borgati to the rescue. This new, uh, better, better Borg. (laughs) 
week. <laughs> Weird. That we ask people, hey, you need our help. Because there has been all these times, I feel like, in franchises where the Borg show up. It's like someone who was dying could be saved through assimilation. Mm. But it's always been like a demand. You know, resistance is futile. Prepare to be assimilated. Now it's resistance. Uh, it's not even that. It's like, hey, do you want to be part of the collective? Hi, have you heard about the collective? Yeah. Well, I think they also... It's like a timeshare now. Yeah. I don't know. I felt that there were a lot of... Maybe this is sort of more, more Easter eggs, but there's certainly some other canonical moments that this episode... This episode? This episode... This episode... This episode points to. This episode. Yes. I will also note uh, that... Uh, Talon's American accent really slippery in this, in this episode. It's been pretty horrendous. Uh, it's been kind of all over the place, but I think, it, you know, it's been mostly held together at the beginnings and ends of sentences. But in this episode, there were times where, you know, it was just Irish AF. I mean, I could do a better job. I mean, I believe that. Let's hear your American accent. <clears throat> what would you like me to say? Um, I'd like you to say, Picard, why do I recognize these catacombs? Picard, why do I recognize these catacombs? Hey, not bad. Thank you so much. Not bad. You even got the why did I? Picard, the why? American... What? What? What do you what do you want from me? What do you want? Picard, what do you what do you Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not, not, not bad, bad. Not bad. Thank you so much. Steven. Thank you so much. Uh and a continuation of uh people from the UK doing perfect American <laughs> accents. <laughs> And Americans being none the wiser. My wife um, always tries to do a British accent and ends up sounding like, um, what's his face from Mary Poppins? Oh, God. Uh, uh, Van Dyke? Yeah, Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke. Hello. Hello, Mary, Hello, Mary Mike. Poppins. Hello, Hello. Gutnuff. I've got to be doing my voice right now. I don't know why I'm being British, <laughs> but I'm a lovely dancer. <laughs> um, okay, so should we go to Easter egg time? Do you have Easter eggs? Well, I have a couple, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, Set Phasers News. And we go immediately over to the Easter Egg, deg- the Easter egg Desk with Stevie. Stevie, what have you got for us? Well, hi there, Aki. Hi there. Happy to be here, as always. Happy to be here. Well, we have a few Easter eggs here for you today. We have, uh, did we notice, number one, did we notice Agnes or Jurati, half of Borgati, wearing a Starfleet jumpsuit, or what appears to be a Starfleet jumpsuit. It had the red uh, shoulders and the black when she was... I did. Did you see that? When she appeared, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did notice that. Bit Is weird. that just like an indication of her her self-identity? I, I would think so, yes, how she sees yeah, herself. I, so mm. She obviously she hasn't been dressed as herself in forever. No. She, the red dress was total Borg Queen. Right. It was a bit, It was quite an interesting yeah. thing. Like, And it seemed to be DS9 in origin in terms of the uniform itself. Interesting. Anyway, next Easter egg we had was Elnor's mobile emitter. Uh, mm-hmm. Voyager's EMH throwback to an episode when they were, in fact, ironically, in uh, they were in, back in time in L.A. in an episode called Future's End. And then mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think there was some chat online about um, future... And then passed, and like the immobile emitter being in the 24th century, and then the 20th, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, whatever. I'm not too bothered about that. And then this, this will, this is some deep cuts for some serious nerds. The NX01 Enterprise refit is now mm-hmm. officially canon. So this cut is so deep, it creates new canon out of previously unused concept art. So when young Picard is sitting at a table, and his father Maurice. James Callis is talking about him. Briefly on the table, we see a model of a retro starship. Yes. Mm-hmm. This model is of an unused, never-before-seen on-screen refit of the 22nd century NX-01 Enterprise from the prequel series, which you are a big mm-hmm. fan, mm-hmm. Enterprise. That's right. So this... Oh, God, <laughs> in 2010, designer Doug Drexler revealed this concept art for proposed upgrade of the NX-01, which could have existed in a hypothetical fifth season of Enterprise. And this would have given the ship a secondary hull and generally made it look a lot more like the original series version of the Enterprise. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so. mm-hmm. 
something. It, it was all in the works, it's, baby. It's a, it's a sneak little peek of, of that. Like, so small, in fact, mm -hmm. you blink and you missed it. Finally, um, Janeway almost resigned over Seven. So this, this now yes. becomes part of canon. So for the first time, we finally have an answer as to why Seven of Nine didn't join Starfleet after Voyager returned from the Delta Quadrant. She says, I tried after Voyager, Seven tells Ravi, but she reveals that Starfleet wouldn't let her because of her Borgness and said, mm -hmm. Janeway went to bat for me, threatened to resign, but I gave up and went full Ranger. Now this strongly suggests that this all happened around 2378, right after Voyager returned to the Alpha Quadrant in Endgame, meaning that shortly before the events of Nemesis in 2379, this is where it gets nerdy, Admiral Janeway was fighting with Starfleet. So then suggesting that the Janeway of the Prodigy era, about four years after that, might still be pissed at Starfleet for not letting Seven join up. So that might end up playing into Prodigy. Yeah, very, yeah good. Who knows? Who knows? I haven't watched Prodigy. Is it taking place in our quadrant or in a different quadrant? Oh, I haven't you know? watched it either. Well, I'm at, you know, I'll be on tour soon and I'll be watching children's cartoons. I've done it before and I will do it again. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much, Stevie. Uh, anything else to report? No, and that's everything from the, the on-set scene of the old one. That's everything from uh, Star Trek Picard on scene. Here we are. Uh, now it's back to you in the studio. Thank you very much. You got even more American on the word studio. Studio. <laughs> like hyper American. I sound back like Kermit. Studio. Hello, back to the studio. You got a bit, yeah, a little bit, a little like bit Hi, Back Kermit. to the studio. Shall we go back to the studio? Where? All right. Well, that was great. Thank you very much, Fozzie. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I guess it's time for quote a double a moments. Oh, yes. Okay. And then we have some new. Ooh. Quotable moments. I was too busy finding Easter eggs. So what do you have? Oh, I got them all. I got them all. Well, you know, there were some truly epic speeches in this one. Obviously, I loved, you know, the... The pièce de résistance is Talon's speech at the end to Picard. Who can help Picard? Picard, Talon. She says, love can be a source of great grief and immense pain, of a tremendous guilt, a reason to run from ourselves or away from each other. Love can be a curse, but always and completely, it's a gift. And then they embrace. Um, obviously, I mentioned the Jurati Borgati speech. What if we take the ship and build a better Borg, a real collective, based on not on assimilation, but salvation? Uh, the fantastic uh, monologuing of Borgati when she turns the tables on them and says, I have absorbed millions of languages and there are a few common words among them. Love, certainly. Hope and fear. And one more common still. Futility. Species thrive without love. Kingdoms conquer without fear. But it is the imperfect nature of all organic things to fight an unwinnable battle against an unbeatable foe. Death. And then uh, just a bit of fun. Uh, right before they run into the vineyard, Seven says, We have a dozen Borg between us and the ship. A 50-yard sprint across open terrain. And all we have is a knife and a corkscrew. To which Rafi replies, And an ice pick. And they made it. They did. So, you know. Hey. Unbelievably so, because you saw that shot they, of them, the above shot. Just like, yeah, all these Borg, <laughs> but they must have been like, ah, oh, Oops. God, my Oops. Microphone. I got so excited. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. A little bit of feedback. Sorry. A little bit of feedback. Uh, yeah, anyway, they did a lot of fighting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, those are, those are my quotable moments. Shall we move on to news? Let's move on to news. So, in Star Trek news, only two bits of news, but they are exciting pieces of news. Star mm -hmm. Trek Strange New Worlds presentation on the Ready Room was just released uh, yesterday, ahead of its May 5th, as, and that's currently next week, um, debuting mm -hmm. in this week's episode. There's a new eight-minute presentation entitled Journey to Strange New Worlds, the 55-year pickup, including interviews mm. with all nine series regulars, executive producer Alex Kurtzman, Akiva Goldsman, and Henry Alonzo Myers, and teases some new sets and alien worlds from the series. <laughs> Exciting. New sets and alien worlds. Exciting. Now, of course, the Star Trek Strange New World opening sequence is available to watch. Have you seen it, have you? 
Of course I haven't. No spoilers, but you've seen it? I have seen it. Well, we can play a little bit of the audio if you would like. Oh, do it. Please hold. f ting f ting Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. How epic was that? Truly epic. I see they went for the... I'm not mad about it. Yep. Pretty fun, huh? Not it was long. That was a whole two minutes. We listened to the whole thing. And if, if, you're, if you're not on our Patreon, you missed all the dancing. <laughs> but two solid minutes of dancing. Oh, yeah. That. That's that's worth it. That's, that's worth three Ooh. bucks a month, five yeah. bucks a month. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Top dollar. Anyway, uh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hang on. We're still in, we're still in news. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's all from the news. <laughs> Gonna do it all properly. I mean, it's professional I'm not stuff. Sure, if it? it's better than our news theme, though. Oh. Um, <laughs> shall, we, <laughs> shall we go on to next time? <laughs> Let's do. Next time on set phasers. Oh, next time on Set Phases, we'll be discussing the season finale of season two of Star Trek Picard. I looked it up earlier today. Still no word on what the title might be. Uh, Ooh, I have a title. Did you find it? I looked Let it up uh, like around 11 and I didn't see it. Hmm, Trek Core. I'm, I check, I check my, my Star Trek, my, take my Star Trek news very seriously. Yes, of course. Picard, Picard. They mentioned who wrote it and maybe who directed it. Oh, no, Farewell, they I believe mentioned who directed it. Farewell. Oh, is it called Farewell? I believe so. Farewell. So next week we'll be discussing episode 10, the season finale of Star Trek, of Star Trek Picard, entitled Farewell. Or farewell, my friends. Also, we'll definitely be watching the season slash series premiere of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. But I don't know when we're going to start covering that. Uh, but we'll see what we can do, I guess. We might record twice next week. Who knows? We're not entirely sure how we're going to do that. We might do it. <laughs> could- okay, well, thank you for joining us. <laughs> if you enjoyed the program, you can go back and catch and find old episodes of our podcast where we cover every single thing that's been coming out. So all the discovery, uh, season one of Picard. Now we're almost finished with season two of Picard. Oh, Lower Decks. We got it all, oh, baby. And if you're up to date, then just catch our new episodes when they drop wherever you get podcasts from. We come out every Monday. Uh, rate us. Subscribe yeah. to us. Ooh, leave a review. I don't know how you do that, but if you want to, yeah. uh, we'll maybe we'll read them. Do it. You can also check out our website. We don't plug this enough, but it actually is really cool. Set Phasers, po- is it? Set Phasers Podcast.com, I believe it is. Um, you I could, in so. fact, if you wanted to, leave us a voice note. That's quite fun. 
What? I know, crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, but yes, please do that. And don't forget, you can join our Patreon for, you know, watching us dance and do silly things. And of course, Zoom hanging with us if you join us at the commander level. Set phases. Commander. It's patreon.com forward slash set phases. You can, of course, also find that link from our website, setphasespodcast.com. Basically, just set phases podcast in Google. You'll find us. Yes. Super easy. Steady on, Commander. If you want to support us in our continuing mission... Oh, wait, we already discussed that. We did, uh, sorry. Well, do find us on Facebook and Instagram, the social media. We are Set Phases Podcast, as just recently mentioned. There you can have conversations with us in uh, the slow time that is social media. And meme game strong, that's Steve. You do a rather a rather good accent of, a, of some sort of British army caption. I should know. Yes, well, I yes. lived with one of them. Ah, oh, did you? I well, did. Well, fair enough. Yes. <laughs> he still calls me, and he's, I can't I can't say his name, but if his name was, um, let's see, hmm, uh, Gordon Bennett, for instance, then he would, he calls me yes. up and he says, hello, it's Gordon, Gordon Bennett here. And I'm like, I know, I have lived with you since I was 10 years old. But yes, there we go. Good night, darling. Good night. I just, I just am impersonating a... Uh, that third series of Black Adder, basically. Oh, so, I love that. Yeah. So oh, yes, Captain, Captain, Major, Captain Darling, Captain Darling, Captain Darling, and Major. Uh, oh, shit. What is oh, what is uh, Stephen Fry? Who does Stephen Fry play? Uh, Mannerin. No. Wait, isn't he? Da- Wait, no, he's the one who says Darling. Darling. He says Darling. Good night, Darling. Major. Um, Hang on, Major. Jeez. Oh damn it, Black Adder. We need to start our Black Adder yeah. podcast, obviously. Oh, oh we, can we do that? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, we could. I don't know <laughs> what we would do, but I would enjoy the hell out of it. Mm, me too. Black Hatter. Black Hatter. Melchick. So long. General Melchick. Mel- Is it Mel- General Chick, yes. Yeah, it's General Melchick. Melnick? Melchick? Melchick. Yeah. Melchick. Melchick. Um, what if they oh there's a great there are so many great quotes from Black Adder and he says oh, well, I just, just incredible stuff I'll, I'll take her to heaven and back get in <laughs> get in flight biz and take her to heaven and back bah, bah. anyway that's all from us here at Set Phasers this is a rather long outro we're gonna get mm-hmm. rid of it now but thank you so much for listening I am Stevie Manns until next time and I am uh, ready to join the new and improved board collective and this has been Set Phasers a highly illogical Star Trek podcast Woo, computer End program. But I... <laughs> <laughs> and this is <laughs> why. <laughs> and this is why I don't join you for musical sets. No, it worked out great. It was like a, you just made it very operatic. <laughs> <Star> <laughs>